Today we're going to learn about Salvador Dali and his surrealist paintings. Dali was born in 1909 in Spain and he died in 1989, so not too long ago. He was famous for his surrealist paintings and his most famous surrealist paintings were of the clocks. You may have seen these in cartoons or in advertisements and magazines. It's where the clocks appear to be dripping. They are drawn and painted realistic, which is part of the word surrealism, real. They're drawn in a real-like fashion, but yet they have a dreamlike or fantasy quality to them. You can see how they appear to be dripping over the side of this block or dripping down this realistic tree or log. If we look at his landscape paintings, this is a landscape, and many of the qualities are very realistic. Real, real cliffs and mountains, water and sky, but yet they have this dreamlike odd quality to them. If you turn this painting to its side, you can kind of see a hidden portrait in the center here. You can see the there is a eyes and eyelashes right here. This is almost like a face figure. A nose, the chin, the neck, and the clock is kind of wrapped around it. This painting was called Persistence of Memory, and he did this surrealist painting in 1931. This is what Salvador Dali looked like when he was alive. He was kind of an unusual man. He liked to have fun. He's kind of making a funny face here. And another quality he had was he had this very interesting mustache. And he it was quite a very long mustache. So when we think of Salvador Dali, we also think of his very unusual, interesting shaped mustache. And here's a photograph right in here of Dolly, kind of playing and making fun of his own mustache. And this very silly comical face that he's making, very expressionistic. And here he is, nature gave me one of my best tools to paint with, his mustache. So you see he had quite a sense of humor. Here it is outstretched so you can see how long it was. So if we're going to do portraits, make sure you put in that interesting Salvador Dali mustache. But let's look at some more interesting portraits that he did. This one is the Invisible Afghan Hound. And if you look carefully, you can see a, a, the Afghan Hound, which is a large breed of dog, hiding in this landscape. Here's the nose of the dog, the top of the head. I'm going to trace with my finger down the back. And this forms the back legs. You can see the lower legs and paws very clearly here. So the fur, he picked up the fur detail, but he hid a lot of it in these cliffs and mountains. Here's the tummy area. And then here's the front paw coming down. And if you look closely again, you may see some hidden figures and a face. So he liked to do this dreamlike fantasy paintings, but yet some of the painting parts were drawn very realistic. When we look at the cl cliffs, it's a realistic landscape. And then look closely and you'll see the face. And here's almost a head right in here. This almost kind of looks like some another figure right in the front. This forms the chin. Here's our two eyes, our nose, and the mouth the chin, but then when you look closer, it forms even another figure. It almost looks like a head holding something or a figure holding a platter or a plate. And then look at the eyes. The eyes form a head and a body of somebody sitting in this desert or edge near the water. And here's another figure laying, like laying in the sand near the cliffs. And then you bring it back down and it forms the eyes. So these are like hidden images, fantasy or dreamlike. 
and the style of art here is surrealist. We're going to be making a surrealist portrait. Let's look at this portrait he did of a woman. And we can do something very similar to this. We can cut these pieces out of magazine and glue them on our surrealist portrait. If you look, we're these are placed in correct proportion. And that's what we're going to learn about as well. We're going to learn about correct proportion for facial features. And then we're going to add some kind of a surprise or surrealist parts to our portrait. If you, if you draw the portrait first, then we can go ahead and cut out pieces. Look at it. You could cut out lips from magazines and just glue them right there on your portrait. Look how it changes the effect of that portrait. So we're going to do this in a few minutes. But first we need to learn how to do correct proportions. So we're going to take our paper and we're going to do two folds. Take the bottom, fold it up to the top, take the bottom again, and fold it up to the top. And so it's a long hot dog. And when I open it all up, it's forming three folds. I'm going to mark the top fold in the center, and I'm going to mark the bottom fold in the center. And in the very center of this, I'm going to place my ruler right in the middle, or you can just use this imaginary line, this folded line, and I'm going to place two fingers in the very middle. And I'm going to put a dot on each side of these fingers. Make sure you see that dot on both sides. Above, I'm using the ruler so you can see, above this ruler, now this, the ruler is right on the fold line, but sometimes when I fold it flat you can't see it. So right above the fold line, I'm going to take, I'm skipping over about a quarter inch, and I'm going to draw a small pea shape. This is the size of the vegetable pea. So I'm skipping over a quarter inch, and I'm going to draw the vegetable pea. And this is about a quarter inch as well. It's a quarter inch wide. The size of a real vegetable pea. If they're not the same exact size, you can adjust them right here. Make them a little bit bigger. From here, we're going to go down. This is the center line. I'm finding the chin, and I'm going to divide this in half again. I'm going to put a very small guideline, and then I'm going to find the half of this line, and this will become the nose line. This is where my nose will go, and I'm going to find this line and this, the chin, nose, chin, halfway. This is my mouth. So this is the correct placement for facial features. Eyes, nose, mouth, chin, top of the head. And then we'll put the, the rest of the guidelines in in a minute. We're going to do it very quickly. I'm just going to show you how to make eyes. When we do eyes, I do a parallel line on the top and a parallel line on the bottom. I then curve this gently to a diagonal. I swing it down to a diagonal. And on the other side, I'm going to swing down to a diagonal, and it's going to meet this line of this dot. So two parallel lines, one, two, and then swing it down and it's touching the center line. It's touching this fold line. And then you can round this. Do a gently curve, smooth it out and blend it in. And the bottom lid's gonna come up to meet the top lid, but not at the very end. Curve this to the edge and curve this up. Leave a little space here. Now I'm gonna go ahead and put the pupils in, or the irises in. We drew the pupils. If you look at the sculpture of Salvador Dali, this is a 3D sculpture I did. And Dolly actually has blue eyes. Um, I did them green so you could see, so it would be a little bit brighter. But if you look, there's the pupil, and the green part is the iris. And then you have the whites of the eyes. You want to make sure you see all of those layers inside there. So we're going to now put in the iris, which is the green part on that sculpture. I'm doing a slight curve and a slight curve. So that's where your eye color would go. And on this side, the same thing, a slight curve and a slight curve. So there we have our eyes. Now I'm going to show you how to make a simple nose very quickly. What I do is I take the, the, where the eye ends or begins, go straight down, put a little guideline, match it up with this. And on the other side, straight down, 
with a little dot. And this is as wide as the nose can be. So the space between the eyes is the space as wide as your nose. So in this area here, I'm gonna draw a letter C, and then I'm gonna do a backwards letter C, and this is just the shapes of the nostrils, but do not go beyond that dot. Letter C, backwards C. Then I'm gonna do the bridge of the nose. And I'm gonna come up from this letter, a slight curve. And above the eye, probably less than a finger space, probably half a finger space, a straight horizontal line and give it a slight curve. This is where your eyebrows would go, right in this area. So we have our nose, eyes, let's work on the mouth. If you take the space between the mouth line and the nose, divide that in half, put a little dot, I'm gonna make a slight V shape right here. And I'm gonna come down and I'm gonna give divide down on this side just small and then I'm gonna divide this in half again. The one I divide in half, I'm gonna extend out extend out and it should line up with the center of these eyes so find the center of your eyeball drop it down oops I need to go this way and this your the width of your mouth should line up to the center of your eyeballs center of the eyeballs is the the, the widest part of your mouth now this looks very exaggerated and really wide the lip parts don't actually come in that far they blend down and in because your lips aren't really fat on this outer edge. And then this is your bottom lip, which comes up and over to meet your top lip. This is just the creases that your, your mouth is making. Now, some people have a fuller lip. If you need to extend this and round this line, you can then alter and change these lines. In our surrealist um, paintings, if we want to go ahead, and when we cut out from magazines, if you want to go ahead and just um, glue on a mouth you can actually just glue on mouths eyes nose etc now we're going to make the shape of the head so we're going to draw lines number one number one past the eyes and then this is your scalp curving down to meet this line coming gently over kind of egg shape to meet this line this would be your chin line and it kind of hugs near your mouth and then your cheeks would fill in in this area now to make the, the rest of your portrait Take your, the edges of your eyes here, drop it down. That's where your neck is, edge of the eyes. Drop it down, you've got the neck lines. I'm coming out horizontally, out horizontally for your shoulders. Now, a lot of times we look at this and it looks kind of funny because there's no hair. This is all, or it looks too egg shape or potato shape, but if you look at it, this is all where your hair lines will be. So once you add the hairline in, when you're looking up the person, actually Salvador Dali had a lot of, very little hair at the top here. But if you wanna, when, if you add bangs, you know, your part, the way your hair is parting or dividing, this is where a bang would go. And then this kind of comes down in and around now your ears. And then the hair comes out, grows and flows on the outside of your head. If it's a shorter haircut, it would come down in here. And if you're doing longer hair, comes out naturally from this, the, the egg shape and just comes down to the shoulders here. But this is correct proportion for where you place things. And you can have fun by taking magazines. If you wanna add surrealist pieces to it, you can. Otherwise, you can just hand draw in details. But you could cut out lips from magazines and glue them down and have part surreal, part realistic. It's up to you how you wanna design your surrealist portrait. So you can hand draw and then we can paint it in or you can use markers or magazine pieces to collage it in. And have fun creating your portraits.